Hello. We are about to set off at, on an adventure in composition of functions, putting one function inside another function. Watch and see. I just realized that I lost my um, live captions. Dog, got it. All right, there are the live captions down there. Now we've got to figure out how I might be able to put my uh, screen, yeah, yeah, mm hmm, in here. How are we going to shorten this? There. Put it down here. That might just work. And we would automatically have captions. Oh my goodness, and that would keep the government happy. That would keep some of my bosses happy. I love it. Now let's see if it actually records. This is going to be an adventure more for me than for you. But here we go. You can't see me now, but that's not really a loss, is it? But don't tell anybody that. All right. Oh, I'm very hopeful about this. Anyway, let us compose functions. All right, here we are. Given that f of x equals 3x plus 5, and g of x equals x to the third. Find f of g of negative four. That is f circle g of negative four. What the heck is going on there? Well, I'll tell you. We've done this already the first week of uh, just composing functions with numbers. And you saw how easy it is once you translate the math code. So F circle G of negative four is really F of G of negative four. And G of negative four equals, well, if G of X equals X to the third, then G of negative four is going to equal negative four in parentheses, to the third power, which is negative 64. Now, f of g of negative 4, then, is going to be f of negative 64, and nothing other than that. If f of x equals 3x plus 5, all we have to do is take negative 64 and put it into the x so that we have 3 times negative 64 plus 5, which is negative 192 plus 5, which is negative 187. So F circle G of negative 4 is negative 187. <clears throat> now that was exciting, but something even more exciting is coming up, and that is what happens when we leave an X in there and we take away a number? That is, we don't even use a number. That makes life more interesting. Instead of F of G of negative four, we're going to find F of G of X. And instead of finding G of F of X, uh, of negative four, we're going to have an X there instead. So let's see how that works. 
I call this A and this B just to separate them. And here I have F of G of X, and here I have, well, F circle G of X, and G circle F of X. But of course, what this is, is just F with a G of X where the X should be. Not terribly bad. If F of X equals X plus one, then F of G of X is going to equal G of X plus one because I put a G of X into the X. Well, G of X, there it is. G of X is seven X squared minus six X minus one. So we're going to have g of x plus 1. So we'll have 7x squared minus 6x minus 1, and then the plus 1, which will give us 7x squared minus 6x, because the negative 1 plus 1 zeroes out. So f circle g of x equals 7x squared minus 6x, and this is what you would write in the answer box. Okay, let's take a look over here. This is more involved as you can see. So G of F of X equals G of F of X. So here we have G of X equals 7x squared minus 6x minus 1. And g of f of x, then, is just going to put an f of x in every x, which is what I did here. f of x is x plus 1, says that right there. f of x is x plus 1. So that means I'll have 7 times x plus 1 with that quantity squared minus 6 times x plus 1 minus 1. So I'll have 7 times x plus 1 times x plus 1 mm -hmm. because that's what x plus 1 squared is. Minus 6 times x plus 1, well, we distribute the negative 6 and end up with negative 6x minus 6, and we have this negative 1 on the end. Now there's not much left to do. I multiply, I FOIL, x plus 1 times x plus 1, that gives me x squared plus x plus x plus 1, because here's what's going on. I have x, times x and x times plus 1 and plus 1 times x and plus 1 times 1. That's what I have. And that's how I got x squared plus x plus x plus 1. Now I distribute in the 7. Oh, oh, no, I don't. Because I combine my like middle terms first. And that gives me x squared plus 2x plus 1. Then I distribute the 7. Let me put some arrows there. Boom, boom, boom. Which gives me 7x squared plus 14x plus 7 minus 6x minus 7. So this is what I've got. Ah, and I combined my like terms. I actually moved them together. And then I combined and I got 7x squared plus 8x. And there it is, because 7 minus 7 is 0. So g circle f of x is 7x squared plus 8x. And we're done. It's a lot of X's and steps, at least in this one, 
where you have to be very careful, but you can do it. All right, now we're going to do the same kind of problem again. F of X equals X squared minus three. G of X equals two X minus five. I'm going to find F circle G of X. I'm going to find G circle F of X. And I do it exactly the same way. Remember, remembering that F circle G of X is a code for F of <clears throat> G of X. And G circle F is a code. Well, G circle F of X is a code for G of F of X. And now look how short both these problems are. I love it. F of X equals X squared minus three. It says so right there. So F of G of X is going to put a G of X in every X, and there's only one X here, and it's squared. So since G of X is 2X minus five, I'll have quantity 2X minus five squared, squaring a binomial, so I'm going to say 2X minus five times 2X minus five. Meanwhile, I have a minus three on the end. So this gives me, oh dear, it looks like, no, I didn't skip a step, not at all. Good, I thought I skipped a step. 2X, let me mark this, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. And negative, oh, oh, 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. And negative 5 times 2x is negative 10x. I'm falling behind on my arrows here. And negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25, and then we have a minus three at the end. So I combine my like terms, and what I end up with is four X squared minus 20 X plus 22. And I'm just noticing I neglected to discuss the domain. Notice that this is a polynomial, polynomials. polynomials have domain negative infinity to positive infinity, which is another way of saying the entire x-axis. All the x's. There's no limit to X's that we could use in that polynomial, which is an excellent reason to love polynomials. That and their graphs. Their graphs are nice and smooth. Very easy to work with. Another reason math people love polynomials. My goodness. The transcription down there is um, the captioning is actually spelling polynomials correctly. I am blown away. Oh, I'm so excited. If it prints, we'll see. All right, now we are going to go to B, which is G of F of X. See the answer there. Now G of X is 2X minus 5, so G of F of X is simply going to put an F of X in for the X. So we'll have 2 times F of X minus 5. And F of X is X squared minus 3, so we'll have 2 times X squared minus 3 minus 5. I distribute the 2 to the X squared 
and to the minus three, so that I have two X squared minus six minus five. So G circle F of X is two X squared minus 11. Just what it says there. Woohoo. Woohoo, it even spelled woohoo correctly. This is amazing. All right, these two functions, f of x right there and g of x right here, have a very special relationship. And you'll discover, oh, I already wrote it. They're inverses of each other. They are inverse functions of each other. And so something wonderful is going to happen when I take f of g of x and g of f of x. Looking ahead, notice that f of f circle g of x equals x and g circle f of x equals x. That will always be true when you compose functions that are inverses of each other. So let's do it. F circle G of X. F of X is 3X minus 3. So F of G of X is going to put a G of X in for X. So I'll have 3 times G of X minus 3. G of X is this scary looking function. A fraction. All fractions are kind of scary looking. 3 times x plus 3 over 3 minus 3. Well, notice that 3 is a whole number. It's an integer. It's also a whole number, actually. Um, I can write it as 3 over 1 and then multiply x plus 3 over 3 by 3 over 1. And when I do that, the 3 up here and the 3 down there cancel, leaving me with x plus 3. So I have x plus 3, and then there's this minus 3 on the end. Well, I happen to know that 3 minus 3 is 0, so I'm left with x. f circle g of x is x. Now that doesn't mean that these functions are inverses because we have to be able to go the other way and also get the answer X. If we do, they're inverses. And of course we already know we did and they are. So here's G of X. G of X equals X plus three over three. G of f of x is going to put an f of x there in the x, f of x plus three all over three. And then three x minus three is what f of x is, plus three over three. Subtracting three and adding three gives me a zero. So I'm left with 3x over 3, the 3s cancel, and I am left with an x. So g circle f of x also equals x, which means, hey guys, f and g are inverses of each other. Okay, that was it for composition of functions. It usually, well, it, in this class, it's not gonna get more difficult than that, but it might in future classes. Yes, enjoy yourself. And I'm going to have fun putting this uh, video on YouTube and seeing if the uh, the captions 
carry over. Talk to you later. Bye bye. I'm so excited. It takes so little to excite me.